So I often get asked by others who are aspiring to be professional musicians, what do I need to do to be a professional musician? And I always tell them these five basic rules that I live by to ensure that I stay working. Mind you, these are my opinions, but I will say they universally are accepted across the board by most professional musicians. Now, there are other rules to live by, but I'm just gonna do five of them. There are more rules that I could list, but I'll make that for another video because I need more content. <laughs> everybody, my name is Brian Christopher Mendes and welcome to Mendiesel 101. My web series that deals with gear, lessons, humor, and anything that I've learned in my 22 plus years as a professional drummer. Today, we are going to be talking about the five rules I believe that should be adhered to by anybody that wants to be a professional musician. Rule number one, understand your role and what's expected of you while being paid by a producer, artist, or a band. Understand that you're being hired to fulfill that person's artistic goal and what they have in mind for their sound, not yours. Now understand this, you are a skilled musician. Nobody's doubting that. That's why you got the call. But it doesn't matter what you are physically capable of playing. What matters is what the artist wants and you can provide them with what they need. You have to put your ego aside and kill the parts as if they are your own. Every time you step on the stage, or in the studio, kill it. Doesn't matter how simplistic it may be, kill it. Remember, they're paying you, so it's important to do it correctly. Hey, yo, buddy Rich. Oh, man, what you were playing right there, hot fire, son. But I'm gonna need you to play what I'm paying you to play. But you know, you know the groove that's on the record? I need you to play that groove. Oh, yeah, 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 that's hot, that's hot. But see, the groove on the record, that sold a million copies. Your groove didn't. <laughs> Rule number two, bring the proper equipment to the gig. It is important if you wanna be a professional drummer that you need to have a stable of gear that meets the demands of all the calls you may receive. I can be called in one week to play with a singer-songwriter, the next night play with a country rock band, the next night play with a pop dance band, the next night play with a heavy metal band, and then later that night play with a blues band. This example that I just gave you was an actual real life experience that I had. Now I can bring a 20 inch kick to the singer songwriter gig because I'm playing either a small venue or a listening room or maybe even a coffee shop. But that 20 inch ain't gonna cut it when I go to play in front of 500 to 1500 people, maybe even 5000 with a country rock band. Nope, nine, nada, no, yet, yet. I, 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 I think that's I think that's a real word. I don't know a language. Somebody help me out. <laughs> At the same time, I can't bring a low tuned 13 inch tom and an 18 inch floor tom with a 26 inch kick to a pop dance gig. Now, don't get me wrong, you can play the actual kit, but they're gonna look at you like, what the? They're gonna look at you like, bring the appropriate sounding gear for the gig at hand. Rule number three, do your homework. When you get a call to do a gig, and they give you ample enough time to learn the material, do so. Now, I'm not talking about when you get a last minute call. Those happen all the time, but that's a different scenario. This is for the scenario of you get the call, you got three weeks to a month out, you're supposed to learn the material before the rehearsal. Remember, rehearsals are not meant for you to learn the material. Rehearsals are there for you to tighten up the material and clear up any questions that you may have or go over what may happen live because what's on the studio recordings and what goes live is completely different. Remember, most rehearsals are booked for three hour blocks and they expect you to go over the material twice if needed. So you can't show up to a rehearsal and not know the material and not expect to get that look from the artist. This mother jive ass. Rule number four, pay attention. As a professional musician, you will run into many situations that weren't planned or rehearsed, and it is vital that you are paying attention while on stage. There will be plenty of gigs where you hear, oh, just watch for the changes, you'll see them coming. Or, watch me for the cues when those breaks hit. Girl, you got that big old behind! 
Uh, and you know it's all mine. Uh, Baby, clap them cheeks. Uh, because you got cheeks for weeks. <laughs> My girl's got cheeks for weeks and I'm happy. Or you may sit in on a gig, which is a very common occurrence when being a professional musician. So you need to listen. You're going to sit up on stage. You're not going to know the song. You may know the song. You may, uh, but as long as you're listening, you will be good. Because I guarantee you when you get off stage, other musicians were there watching you. And they will say, hey man, you sounded really good. What is your number? Rule number five, be on time. Just because you're a musician doesn't mean you get to live those cliche behaviors of that rock star lifestyle. If rehearsal is at noon, you show up at 11.30 to set up your gear and be ready at downbeat at noon. Now these five rules aren't law. They are my personal opinion, but I have the funny feeling that most professionals will agree with me with these five rules. Now there are more than five rules, but that's for another date and time in another video. Yay, yay! <laughs> I gotta stop saying that. <laughs> Come up with something more original, fool. I'm Brian Christopher Mendes. This is Mendiesel 101. Peace and chicken grease, motherfuckers. <laughs>